Hey everyone, it's me, Jared, and today's gonna be a pretty long video. I mean, I've already been working a little hard. My hair is so destroyed in the back, but as one of my favorite YouTubers, Isaac Arthur, says, it's gonna be a long one, so grab a drink and a snack. And, and then, uh, well, yeah, that's what he does. So uh, I wanna talk about the best games of the decade for me. Uh, there's too many, so I'm gonna forget some, but I think the best one, I gotta start, and I, by the way, I filmed this video like three times, and I almost cried every time, so hopefully I don't cry. Um, the best video game of this decade for me has to be Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. It's not a good game, but it did a lot for me, and I think a lot of the reasons I am who I am today is because of that game. That was the first game that a couple things happened. I played online, like, that wasn't RuneScape, right? The games I had played online before this was RuneScape. One time when I was, like, six, I got put into a Halo 2 public match and kept getting team killed. I was a squeaker. Uh, but other than that, no online gaming. And a couple things happened on MW3. I learned a lot about the YouTube scene, like, pros and... At that time, I'd been watching YouTube, but like quick scoping and how I play shooter games was because of that game. My friend Connor, one of my best friends, we really became friends over that game and the games ahead of it. And God, I can go, I can go into detail on just that alone. Like the username I'm Pacific came from Call of Duty. Like that's how important it is. Every username I've had, except for SodaMan148X, has been influenced by MW3 and what I did on it and how I was in public matches and the Xbox and all that. So that game's really important to me. Halo Reach was just a good game. I One of the last games that I really played with my cousins who I don't talk to anymore. A lot of good memories on Halo Reach. And a lot of actually playing with my sister. That was a game that I played with my sister. One of the last games I really played with her. Another game was Civ V. Again, it was one of my first actual games in modern PC gaming. You know, it was Civ V. And it really showed me what PC gaming could do. And it was the game. Okay, now as much as I like MW3 and what it did for me, Civ V was the game where I was like, Mom, we need a gaming PC. And buying that gaming PC led me to have the capabilities to make my own YouTube channel. So, you know, Civ Five, man, was the game that did that for me. And I, for that, it's an ultimate respect thing for Civ Five and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Call of Duty, I'm going to say the whole entire series is very important to me. Not because of the games. I mean, there's a couple games that are pretty good. And it introduced me to esports, which I think I'm gonna try for a few months just being an esport player, um, figuring that stuff out, see if I like it. But East, uh, Call of Duty led me into a game that I have formed many friendships over. Oh, two games, actually, which is Rainbow Six Siege and PUBG. Siege is the reason I'm friends with Austin. Like, Call of Duty, we met... Well, we met playing Skyrim, live-streaming Skyrim. And uh, Skyrim's an important game to me because one of my brothers, it was one of the last games that we really played together, and it formed a very special bond with him, and it was a game I was live-streaming that I met Austin with. That's how important Skyrim is to me. It, it led me to meeting one of my friends, Austin. And Austin and I played on Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for a little bit. I beat him in a... 1v1 quickscope, and then like a year later or something, we started playing Siege together. And Rainbow Six Siege was a game that, I mean, I made so many friends on. I met some people. It's a game where I've continued friendships over. It's the first real game. Like, I knew about Call of Duty Esports. Siege was the first game where I really watched a whole set of Esports matches and got into a game heavily. Like, heavily into Siege. Siege is, I think... This, one of the single games I put in a bunch of hours into. My guess is by the time Siege dies, I will have put in more hours into Rainbow Six Siege than Oblivion. 
that's that's how good that game is to me. I mean, it's a masterpiece of a game, and I love it. I I love Siege. God, I there's a part of me that hopes Siege never dies. I mean, I know it's gonna die, but I hope it never dies. <laughs> so, I mean, there's so many games I can talk about that I just. I mean, there's games I enjoyed, but another game that was really influential was Kerbal Space Program. That game was the game that I, I, I thought I was going to be a Kerbal Space Program YouTuber. And beyond just the fact that, I mean, that's my first YouTube game. And I found a lot of my favorite YouTubers because of it, but Kerbal Space Program introduced me to astronomy and the motions of the planets. And I probably learned more about physics, math, uh, engines, in astronomy from Kerbal Space Program than I did school. Like, it, it just because I played this game, you know, I learned about rocketry, and I'm, I love rocket science, I love astronomy, I love, you know, th things like the motions of planets. That's something that's so hard to teach, but Kerbal Space Program taught me how planets work and rotations and all that stuff, and what goes into landing a spacecraft. Like, before that, all I knew was that how to get a spaceship into orbit was launch it up and then go sideways. Like, that's all I knew. You know, the even procedures like docking, I have a, an appreciation for docking things in space and computing. And I, I can't say enough about Kerbal Space Program and how amazing of a game it is and what it did for me. So jump. I'm just going to jump around a little bit. I mean... I could go into games that I really liked playing. Uh, Modern Warfare 2019 is a good game. Uh, like I touched on PUBG. PUBG is a game that has definitely solidified a lot of friendships with me. And it taught me, before PUBG, I really didn't like playing games non-seriously, just to mess around. I mean, I'd done it before, but PUBG was a game that chilled me out and reintroduced me to just playing games to mess around and not try to win all the time. And, and that's important, you know? And it's a game that I streamed a lot on DLive. And I made, I mean, I made $2,000 off of PUBG on DLive. And I learned about cryptocurrency, and I learned how to see scams, and I learned how all that stuff. PUBG was there for it. But, I mean, God, there's Twilight Princess. I don't, that didn't come out in 2010, did it? I don't know. I won't worry about that. But, I mean,. God, there's so many games. Uh, miscreated, fun little game that I actually enjoyed a lot. Nothing too special about it, other than it's just a game that I had a lot of fun with. A game that I bought with my sister that she never played. And one of my first PC games. The Escapist was another one, Papers, Please. You know, and a lot of these games that came out this year that I enjoyed were because of YouTube. Like, it all kind of goes full circle, right? Because I started playing online gaming in 2010s, really seriously online gaming, and even Minecraft. And because of those games, I, I, I mean, it, it's because of those games that I've been starting a YouTube channel, playing on YouTube. You know, I've only been on YouTube for four and a half years, and I'm not even, I don't feel like I've gotten started. I mean, filmmaking, the reason why, you know, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I started playing online games, got a gaming PC. Uh, a few of my friends made YouTube channels before me, and I'm like, sure, let me do it. I learned how to edit. I learned how to commentate. And now it's like becoming my job. It's allowing me to not work at Walmart anymore, at least not as much. And, you know, that's what games have done for me. God, there's I, I didn't I made a list before this. I th I'm throwing the list out, man. Because this, this decade has been the best decade of my life. I've only lived through two. I was born in 1998. But compare this decade to the last one, this one's definitely better. And I'm looking forward to the next decade. Decade three of my life. 2020 to 2030. 29, whatever. 2029. And video games have done so much to change my life. Whenever I hear people talk bad about video games... Or that video games cause violence, or that video games are a waste of time. It makes me sad because video games have been so influential to me and have helped me make so many friends. 
I mean, this game called Ark Survival Evolved. It's a dinosaur survival game. You're on an island. I was just playing that game one day, and someone came up to me named Brandon, and we became friends. And then Brandon and I were playing, along with my friend Sid, and my friend Jacob Fry. We met, I met Brandon and Fry on Ark on a public server randomly. I could have selected to settle a base anywhere, and I built it next to Brandon, and then we made in the middle, and then my friend Fry came along, and, you know, I know these people, some of my best friends, that I know them because of video games. You know, I don't have, I would say half my friends, I only know through the internet and YouTube and video games, online gaming. Like, I have three friends from school, I'm thinking of actually my real friend. Yeah, three friends from school and more than three from the internet. One from just real life. We didn't ever go to school together. But, like, half my friends, at least, are from online gaming of this decade. And it's awesome. It's so cool. I'm, I'm really, really proud of this decade. For I'm happy for what it's done for me. So, um, those are my top games of the decade that come to mind. I, I'm, I've definitely missed some. You know, it's hard because there's just so many games. There's so many games that came out this year that I, I just, I don't know. I could talk about Civilization VI and what it's done for the YouTube channel. I could talk, I could talk about any game that came out. I mean, think of all the indie games that came out. Papers, Please, fun game. Salt and Sanctuary, that's a game that introduced me to 2D platforming on the computer, and I, it was a really, really, really good game. I mean, Salt and Sanctuary and Resident Evil 7 were games that taught me how to do long Let's Plays. Those games are not easy to Let's Play. I will tell you guys that right now. Resident Evil 7, terrible to Let's Play. You're scared all the time, and you want to try to be entertaining, so you, you go you know, face first into danger, and Salt and Sanctuary is just a game where if you stop playing for a day, you have no idea what the hell is going on. I mean, there was an entire episode of that Salt and Sanctuary series that I made that is me trying to figure out where to go next, and that only happened because I stopped playing the game for, like, a week. Like, and, and Skyrim, Kerbal Space Program... This was a good decade for me. Like, I don't... It's literally defined my life this decade. Like, the things that I started here are probably going to define the rest of my life. And video games are a big part of it. The video games of this decade are a huge part of it. So, that's my... Uh, my, my video on the top games of the decade. I didn't cry. Uh, I'm getting a little teary-eyed. I feel it on the inside. Um, it's, it's hard to express what it's done for me. But, you know, I'm finishing out the decade with an amazing experience, and I'm excited for the next decade. Guys, in the comments below, tell me about your favorite games of the decade. Uh, I mean, if you can comprehend what I just said, good on you. But, you know, it's 2020 now, and I have some radical hair going on in the back. It's time for the next decade. 2010 to 2019 to find a lot of who I am, and it's because of those video games of those decades that I am here talking to you today. So thank you for watching. I'm Jared, the Casual Gamer, and I'll see you guys in the next one.